We're slim and so. <laughs> it's good. We're two uni students sailing the Karma, our 10 metre sailboat around Australia. We've just pushed off from what will be our last stop in civilization for the next 1500 nautical miles. We've made our last repairs and provisions and it's now time to take the leap and head further north towards a reef scattered and vaguely charted coastline that is for the most part uninhabited. With multiple high pressure systems forming in the Tasman Sea, the northern Queensland waters are being thrashed by strong winds and we know this leg will be no walk in the park. We will have our skills and composure tested. Me, honestly. But we have faith that we've done what we can to get Nakama and ourselves ready for the journey to and over the top of Australia. Our main really is hanging on by a thread. It just needs to get us through this season. Seriously, it's probably more tape than sail at this stage. Well, as ready as we'll ever be. This is episode seven of season two, Over the Top. So this is the big exciting beginning of the over the top part of our adventure. This is the exciting moment, but I don't know. I think maybe it's just like sort of hitting Simon and I of like what we are intending to do. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder what the f we're doing. I think it's important that we be real and that it's not always exciting and lovely and woo, you know, because sometimes uh, we do seriously and like, we're just like, what the f are we doing? There you go. I feel like I'm at a cafe at the moment though. We got heaps of fresh food for a moment, so food will probably be looking real good for the next couple of weeks until it stops. So we are actually feeling excited about our trip. Very good. It's like we said last week. I always know that when we get out there, it's it's fine and we'll be fine and we'll probably have fun, but it can just take a moment to get into it after leaving the security of land. Like when we used to play sport, your heart would race as you walked on the court or field with the anticipation of the blow of the first whistle. Moments after the game begins, the nerves dissipate and you're just in the moment. We are heading 27 nautical miles to where Captain Cook sighted a small low island, creatively named Low Isles. We hope they're not too low because we would like some protection from the strong wind warning that is meant to be kicking our ass this evening. We're five nautical miles, no, we're five, we're four, <laughs> We're four nautical miles away from the Low Isles now. You can see it, it's quite low, but a lot bigger than we thought. So that's making us happy because we thought we were gonna have a really shit night's sleep and there might be a possibility that we could get a little bit of sleep tonight, which could be good. It almost feels like you're cheating when you got a mooring ball. It's just like pick it up and you, that's it, you're done. <laughs> you want it real? It is real. You know people like, Show us the real stuff. This is me blowing my nose. I'm blowing my nose. And I'm watching the batteries. Yeah, doing good, but it's real. That's what happens. So it's gotten a little bit 
Brawlio, which you may be able to tell, um, you might not and think that we're lying, but we mentioned this recipe in Townsville. We mentioned something to do with the cauliflower. We came up with a new recipe we really like. Yeah, we're so excited to show you, but we have to buy a cauliflower for it because we just use the whole, we use the cauliflower. Almost reckon I might have to go to shops and get a cauliflower. Um, anyway, cauliflower recipe coming soon, stay tuned. Here we are now with a new cauliflower to show you what we came up with because we think it's a keeper. We accidentally struck gold and we're going to share it with you. So. We're making a no cream creamy cauliflower pasta. First up, just roughly chop your cauliflower and throw it in a baking tray. Then whack your mushrooms in it. I don't know how many you want, as many mushrooms as you think you desire. I've roughly chopped them and also thrown them in. Next, chop the top off your... It's not just a singular clove, but the thing that holds all the cloves together and put that in the baking tray. Simon wants me to say that this is called the mother garlic. Next, grab yourself an onion and roughly chop it. Don't chop with the grain, chop against it. If that didn't make sense, then just how I'm doing it right here. Put that in your tray too. Add a drizzle of olive oil, a crack of pepper, a crack of salt, a little bit of smoked paprika, and a little bit of chili flakes if that's your jam. Whack it in the oven at about 180 degrees. I think you normally roast things, but on a boat oven, just your highest heat. And while you're waiting, Make yourself a cocktail, because you've earned it. Cheers. Good, Maggie? Pretty good. He's actually pretty good, eh? It's pretty good. Pull your veggies out of the oven when they start to look like this. Now, I'm going to get half of the cauliflower out of the tray and put it into a blender of sorts. I'm also going to put in here nutritional yeast, which is sort of like a cheese replacement. If you're not into that, you could probably use like parmesan cheese or something like that. It's sort of like that kind of taste. I put some oat milk into it. I also added all of the garlic into it as well. And I blended that up. I tasted it a little bit and it needed more salt, so I added more salt. It also needed a little bit more nutritional yeast and some more, a little bit of milk because, to make it a little bit thinner. And I re-blended it again and it was perfect. I whacked it all together with the pasta and that sauce and here we are now. <laughs> if you ate it like this, it would be entirely vegan, but we're gonna do a little cheeky something and put some cheese on top and put it back in the oven to melt that cheese. Simon requested it. Oh, she put the kale in it. I put the kale in it. Simon wants to put the cheese in it, so I guess it's only fair. Simon's taken over my role because I'm sick of cooking in the rolls. <laughs> He's serving it up and it looks good. Pasta a la creme. It's the best pasta you've ever had this week that we've cooked you. Let's pepper it for you. I like it's that good. It's Honestly, good. it's that good. Is it alright? It's, it's um, not. I hate, yes. It's, it's not alright, no. I was gonna say. We always, whenever one of us cooks, we always film the other person that didn't cook, so then we have some sort of credibility. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Oh man, mushrooms. Mmm. That's good, eh? For the first time in two days, we are getting off the boat. It's amazing how much time you can spend in such a small space. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty miserable out here today. Four biscuits. Sure. Red fish. Come for the nap for dinner. Hi. I think I've spotted Miles. He's got his full pet settle out. He might have snapped a sheet or something. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> 
So yes, it's been a little stormy and we've gone a little stir crazy being stuck on the boat. But finally, the clouds opened in the sky and we took the opportunity to stretch our legs and go check this place out. Look at those old cans. After days of strong winds, the viz wasn't amazing. But surprisingly, we did run into some big fish. Quite literally, because we couldn't see them until we bumped into them. Our hopes of the weather improving haven't come true. And the foreseeable forecast shows that it will get worse before getting any better. We've had less and less sleep each night as the moon grows fuller and brings with it higher tides that allow the now built up ocean swell to wrap around the island and over the reef. You know that tide's gonna come up and those waves are gonna stop hitting that reef and start hitting Nakama. Throwing Nakama around like a pinball. <laughs> the rolls are back <laughs> and this weather is just not pleasant let's just say that it is quite awful out here at the moment so we're over it and heard there is a smaller island 40 nautical miles away with a greater fringing reef that offers better protection hope island has given us some hope for a better night's sleep pretty sure it still is a strong wind warning or whatever but it looks like the least strong of the wind warnings this week so we're gonna go for a bit of a sail this morning um, we're all pretty sick of being bunkered down though. I think we'd pretty much go sailing in anything this morning. Um, yeah, that's, what's, that's what we're doing. We're getting, ready, we're getting ready to go. We're taking the opportunity while still on the mooring and facing into the wind to get the main up. And for the first time ever, we're going to sail off the mooring. She's gonna be a wild one today. But, yeah, we just sailed off the mooring. First time we've ever First done that. First time we did that, we took the opportunity because we are like, you know what? We did have the engine on just in case, but we didn't put it any more than in neutral. Steamy seas, eh? Yeah. tribulation it would have been amazing if there wasn't so much cloud cover over these amazing hills of rainforest because it probably would have been quite spectacular to see the wind and waves started picking up and with the wind falling further behind us we decided just to run with the mainsail which already has a reef in it. She's getting a little bit gusty now.
Wynn's building, C's building, the anticipation's building. But if we keep doing seven knots, we'll be there in two hours. But it looks at this stage like we'll be there just under two and a half, three hours with all the messing around and stuff. All right, we're getting close, so always the nerves hit you when you're coming into somewhere different. The swell has picked up, so I don't know, I guess we're just hoping that we can actually see the reef when we do rock up. Um, Call us crazy, but we've chosen to take this line between two reefs. We figure as soon as we shoot in, the reef will block this swell. However, it's a little nerve wracking approaching the narrow, unmarked channel. We're going in a channel with reef either side of us and the swell is quite, quite big at the moment. So I'm feeling a little bit nervous about, you know, the tight spaces and the conditions we have. So it always seems smaller until we're actually in it, yeah. isn't, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, should we, hopefully should be okay. So our old cruising guide said to go between the two reefs and through a channel in. We were a bit hesitant on that in this weather, but then we figured he didn't say anything about the weather. So we're like, let's give it a whirl. And we are in between the two reefs and the two islands. And it is starting to marginally chill out now. So hopefully it continues to chill. So the channel turned out to be the straightforward part. As it was low tide, you could see the reef clearly on either side. The challenging part lay where we had to switch off from our charts and purely use eyesight. As the chart indicates, the anchorage is dry on the reef. However, approaching the anchorage required turning into the wind, which made spotting the reef, or anything for that matter, near impossible as the rain and 30 knots of wind pierced our eyes. We spotted a gap in the reef and went for it. However, we got to a point that in the fierce conditions, we could no longer make out a safe path and with reef too close for comfort, we turned Nakama around to try another approach. I don't think I've ever been so stressed coming into somewhere. Like, me, honestly, this is f Oh no. F that was just so unpleasant. Navionics just, it lacks so much detail. It says that we're on reef right now, but we're actually in seven meters of water. We didn't really have anything to go off apart from eyesight and that we knew that there were mooring balls in on the green patch on Navionics and to forget about that and there is actually water there. So we didn't really have anything to go off apart from our eyesight. Luckily, it's like basically low tide, so we could see breakers on the reef. We tried to come in one way um, and we just missed some reef and then ahead of us just looked like it was just, just reef all around us and we didn't know which way to go. So we like pulled out of that and went back into deeper water and then went around a different way. But it like we literally had 30 knots coming in, 30, it was like got up to 35 knots coming in on our nose. So we just got absolutely Walloped. Walloped. We got coming in here and motoring up at two knots against 30 knots of wind. That was by far, I reckon, the hecticest thing we've ever done on Nakama. Well, that was to date the wildest sail we've had. And we're sure there's more where that came from. Now this is sailing. But for now, we're safely tucked in behind reef and despite the huge swell and howling wind, we are quite comfortable and we're glad we made the leap. Who else is keen for the wind to stop blowing 25 to 30 knots every day consistently? I know we are. <laughs> Join us next week. We finally see the sun for a day and miss no chance for activities before setting out for another wild sail. We'll see you then.